And yes, again, good morning and thank you. As you may be aware, if you've joined us in the past, we've been attempting to design a training program on website so that as an agent, if you were familiar with the business, we could enhance your abilities. If you were totally unfamiliar with the business, we were starting from scratch uh, way back actually in March this year uh, with the initial contact and setting appointments with clients. And over the period of these last few months, uh, we've gotten to the point where we prepared and made a presentation to our imaginary family, the Andersons. And after making that sale, we went forward and processed the application. Then we did our studies behind the underwriting to make sure everything was taking place in a timely fashion. And we were able to attain that policy. And once we had it in our possession, we went out actually just last week and we made a presentation of that policy to the family as a uh, delivery process. So what we're doing today is going to the next step at that particular time, which be your attempt to attain referrals from that family. And even though in my process here of structure, we're already down to about step 14 um, to obtain the referral. The actual structure and the psychology behind the referrals you were doing or should have been doing in your early conversations with your client. Probably one of the most difficult thing that an agent has to do besides finding a client to talk to is when you have one asking them for others that you could bring your products to um, many times we're uncomfortable with that and probably the reason we're uncomfortable primarily is because when you put yourself in the shoes of your client uh, you yourself are probably uncomfortable when someone comes forward and says to you, you know, who do you know that I could talk to? And because of that, we've already created a mental block uh, ourselves to being able to go ahead and do that. So what we want to try to do is just try to think first and foremost when someone does ask you for a referral, when are you comfortable and when are you not comfortable? And if you will envision that circumstance and then transfer those type of thoughts over to how you go about your daily activity, perhaps you'll be able to take advantage of those circumstances. Now, with today's webinar, as always, we've got you all muted, but we do have that box to the side that allows you to open and put in your questions. Of course, during our information session this morning, we will also have a polling question. That's just to make sure you're still out there and active with us. And probably most importantly, at the end of the presentation today, we will be posting handouts of these referral scripts or referral stories. It's probably a better way I have to look at them and that you'll be able to add these hopefully to your arsenal as you go out to work with your families. Now, again, when we're talking about the necessary steps, it's as I have said throughout the sales process, there really is a psychology behind it. There's a factor built in with the time. We talked about a good life insurance salesman is not making a sale on a one call close. Uh, the purpose in that is that number one, when you make that original contact, uh, and it's probably over the phone, um, you, you haven't had an opportunity to get face to face. And you need to schedule that appointment 
at which time, of course, when you do get face-to-face, -face, you want to obtain the vital information you're going to need and get an understanding um, through a fact finder of what that family's conditions are and what the right product choice is going to be for their particular needs. And if you do that properly, you're going to take that information back to your office. And then again, you're going to do your due diligence and you're going to prepare not only the, the quotes or illustrations, but you're also going to develop that psychological circumstance uh, and how you're going to present it, and again, how you're going to additionally, again, sell yourself when you go back that second visit. You know, oftentimes I've had agents say to me, well, why can't you just on that first visit just sit there, open up your laptop, and go to the quotes? Well, you could, but if you do, you're not going to be doing justice to yourself or to the family that you're servicing. And by that, I mean you're going to discover as we went through in our presentation uh, certain edges that you'll have when you're back in your office and you're preparing the information that you can gather your thoughts and that you can be selective as to what you want to take to them and how you want to lead them down that path. If you're trying to do all of that on the first sit, believe me, it's just not going to come across smoothly and you're not going to be able to show that professional edge. So again, by doing this, and we've now put ourselves into a second step when we come back and we present the information, hopefully we're going to be able to be successful in our efforts and obtain that order. And even by doing so at that time, again, there's going to be an opportunity to have been planting seeds so that we can get to this final step. I want to talk about the very first time you meet someone. Uh, and that's going to be, again, it could be in that first meeting at their home, uh, but it could also be just in a general conversation session with them, uh, someone that you've met within your own uh, social activities. And, and it's going to be something that's going to be very basic. So what you want to do early on is mention that when you have in the past prepared a plan for a family, it has not been unusual uh, for them to ask you to prepare a similar plan for a friend or a business associate or perhaps even a relative. Uh, in fact, you personally have been quite blessed by the fact that you've been able to build a clientele that you work with strictly because they've been referred to you from another client. And then you want to leave it at that. And, and the reason for that, again, is the first step involved, and that's going to be planting a seed. And, and all we've done at this point is mention to them just this one little casual statement that you've had the opportunity to be blessed with a clientele that's been built on the referrals of other clients because they were comfortable with you. And again, we didn't ask for any. We didn't do anything more than that. We just made that statement. You also should be aware that other things that you're going to do, again, when we get to that first meeting and we start gathering the vital facts, one of the things that we talked about was you're going to do a fact finder. Okay, And when you do that fact finder, you're there, number one, to find out what's going on with that family but you're also going to get the details of information. And you're going to find out that there are other professional advisors in their world. Uh, they could be of many different walks of life and many different professions. But you're going to be listing that information and gathering it. Now, you are really gathering that information to some extent so that if you need to contact those advisors that you'll have the information to do so in the process of preparing that life insurance illustration but you're also doing it in the background to begin to build another set of relationships for yourself so we've talked about this and we come to that point then this morning where I'd just like to ask you and if Rebecca if you could post our first polling question please
so during again the time uh, that we've talked about, hopefully you've had an opportunity to go out and meet a family and begin to to try these skills. And again, during that fact finder, we're going to say, you know, have you been able to go out and build a portfolio or a relationship with other professionals? And in our little poll this morning, we're doing quite well. We're almost 100% responded, so everyone is still with me early. Uh, just so that you know the results, about 25% of you uh, have not yet made a bond with another professional outside of the industry. Uh, nice number, almost 40% have had at least one. Good number again, 25% at least two. And overwhelmingly, to have 13% of you have all three of them in your category, that's great. Now, what's going to happen with this, of course, is, um, again, you did post that information so that if you should need it, you have access. But again, you've done it so that if you don't have an attorney uh, that you can refer your clients to, perhaps you're going to build that relationship with the attorney they have mentioned. Also, you're going to do the same thing for an accountant. If you're strictly in the insurance world of health and life and you don't have a contact in the PC world so that someone with property and casualty insurance can be a reference to you for your clients and that vice versa, in most probability, if they're a specialist in the property and casualty area, they're probably not overwhelmingly aware of or responsible or active in the life or health business. So that type of a bond uh, can be of a great benefit to you. Also, early on in that conversation or during that fact finder, one of the things that I always try to make sure is when I get an attorney's name or an accountant, I ask if they use their professional advisors in a way to assist them in making decisions like this on their life insurance. And the reason I do that is twofold. I believe again, number one, you're gonna have most people say, well, of course not, it's personal business and they wouldn't take that to their attorney or their accountant. Although, again, depending upon the size and the nature of the business, if you're working with uh, a substantially secure client who is planning some business succession or perhaps some long-term retirement planning, there is a possibility that they will want to go back to those professionals. But again, in most cases, they're going to say, no, this is, you know, they have them there for those particular needs. They take care of their taxes every year and God forbid they should have a traffic ticket or something like that come up that they have someone that they can get back to. Uh, hopefully they have an attorney that they had prepare their wills uh, so that they have those protections in force already. But the reason also that I've done that early on and gotten that response that they don't use them on this practical product is so that I can eliminate the objection in the end when somebody might say, well, I just want to show it to my accountant or my attorney, which is usually a smoke screen anyway. Uh, but if you can eliminate that smoke screen early on, of course, you're taking advantage of the circumstances. So, again, when you're asking if these trusted professionals are good business people, you might go a little bit further and ask them if they've ever referred other friends, business associates, or family members to their accountant or their attorney. Again, this is just one more of those seeds that we're planting. If they have referred to them, then you know that they have the ability, the desire, or have at least in the past fulfilled that 
relationship by referring others to them. So again, it's just one more little seed that you plant in order to set yourself up to take advantage of that in the future. So we finally get to the point, and that is, you know, where and when is the best time to ask for a referral? So my personal opinion is that after you have completed your work, after you have proven to them your professional ability, after you have provided them with benefits that weren't there prior to the relationship that you established, once you have fulfilled the thought that you really do care about them and their family needs, that you weren't there just to hustle a sale and make a commission, you have put yourself in a position now that would truly be worthy of obtaining those referrals. So at that time, and again, if, if we consider that, that should be at the time that you're delivering the policy, which again now, if you've put everything in order, this would actually be your third visit to the family. A fact-finding gathering, an information presentation to include the actual application for the insurance. And finally, after the success of time, getting it through underwriting, the ability to bring that policy to them. So last week we talked about when you do that policy delivery, the importance, this is your last shot as a professional to again, bury that thought of how well you did your job by taking the time to go through that policy, not just go in there and get a signature and deliver it, but to, again, to show them the benefits. Even more so with the products that we've been leaning towards in our mock sale, having to do with the living benefits, which are very new to the industry and definitely very new to any consumer that you're gonna have the opportunity to discuss that with. So it's gonna take a little bit more time than you might normally have spent on a policy delivery to make sure that they do understand how the living benefits, the old standard for terminal illness that's been there by, and is probably with most every company today. And then of course the newest benefits for both chronic and critical needs. I think as we talked in the very early stages, that companies that don't have these benefits are either gonna add them to their portfolio in the near future, or they're gonna fall off on the wayside. And it's already becoming, just since March when we started talking about it, I've been seeing almost on a daily basis carriers adding living benefits to their portfolio. So it is gonna become more and more competitive. One of the benefits, of course, that we brought to your attention for you as an agent was that you do have great tools on the Messer website to allow you to do your quoting that will allow you to determine which carriers are gonna be most effective with the living benefit plans that they offer. We also had determined in our original workup because we were at the time, if we wanna step back, only three companies were gonna give us this benefit. We had Transamerica that's had the living benefit attachment to their portfolio, perhaps the longest. We have American General that added these in the last few years and in my opinion, have had the best or done the best job in the actual product and the way the product pays back to the client. And then of course we do have North American that also added that to their portfolio. However, they only have added it at this point to their permanent products, to their ULs. So 
we pretty much originally started looking at only uh, American General and Transamerica in the comparison. Again, that's growing and growing every day. Uh, the Anaco Group, the American National Group, has added living benefits. Um, some of them are actually saying, they're saying living benefits, but they still haven't made the turn. They haven't gone to adding the critical and chronic. They're still basically trying to use the term for the terminal illness rider only, which again, that's been around a long time. So that's, again, they just don't want to leave the edge. They want to say that they've got living benefits. But again, it's really not as strong as you would like to see. And when we're talking about the living benefits, of course, I'm getting just a little bit ahead of myself here. But what we're going to do next week on our webinar is actually have Trevor with American General Partners Group spend the time with us explaining how those benefits work actually how the determination is made on the amount of money that can be attached based on the type of health condition, critical or chronic, that may exist with that client. Because again, I want you as an agent to have a real good understanding of how it works. Um, not just the idea that you have it and that it's a great benefit for families to have, but they need to know how does it work? And again, that'll be next Wednesday, same time, 9 o'clock. And again, as I've mentioned before, every presentation that we've done, so if I've talked about or mentioned something this morning that perhaps you weren't attending with us, please go ahead and access our Messer website and go to our Agent Resources tab at the top. Open that up to the drop down for the Learning Center. And then under Just Added is where you will find these presentations. Now, I do want to put one caveat in there. We are actually rebuilding our website at this time. So I think if you go in there, you can go to our webinar about three weeks ago. But I think the most two current ones have not yet been posted on the website. We normally post these within a few days after the webinar, but until we get that whole system redesigned and that's what's happening, uh, you might have a break in what's been done in the most recent time. So again, though, take advantage of it if you would. So let's go back now to the purpose in today's program. And what we're going to talk about on the referral basis are what I call the, the stories. I don't think you need to have a whole ammunition box of how to do it, but I'm going to give you three ideas. And then, of course, what you're going to need to do is bring these into your own verbal skills. But let's start with the first one. And the first one is again based on the fact that we had planted a seed. So uh, again, Mr. and Mrs. Anderson, early in our relationship, I mentioned that I've been blessed with the client portfolio that's been built by my trusted clients. If you feel that I've truly done a good job and prepared a protection plan for your family, I would certainly be honored to be given the opportunity to do the same for someone close to you. From your associations, from your family members, from your friends, from your business associate, is there one you would like me to call on? Shut up, wait, and get that response. Once you've received that response from one of the spouses, you want to make a note of that name, phone number, email address perhaps. And then you want to turn to the other spouse and ask them the same thing. Is there another family member, a friend, or associate that you would like me to call on? Again, you're going to wait and get the response, hopefully one from each. So if we put ourselves in this position, <clears throat> I'm saying to you that 
I don't think you need to sit there and get a long list of names. Okay. And I've heard people that come back. They're so proud. They got their, they got their church list. Oh, wonderful. Are they really going to call on every person in that church? If they're very aggressive, they might, but very few would. I'd rather have the name of a person that is close to each of them. And you're going to see that again later on. And I'd rather have just one or two names when I leave a home that I know are a better opportunity for me than I had when I walked in the door the first time. Because these would be the two most important people probably in their life. So <clears throat> with that in mind, again, you would pick up that opportunity. You might even ask them to call for you and let them know that you would be calling them. Um, you might let them know you might just want to drop them a line. So if you had the business address, you could at least introduce yourself that way. Anyway, I think you get the gist here. And just try to, again, remember that it it's a planning program. You, you planted a seed way, way back. It could have been two months before when you made that initial contact, or even longer, <clears throat> that you're finally coming back now and reminding them just very easily that this is how you have been able to build your business successfully and be able to do it personally within the clientele that you're always working with. So again, this will be a handout for you at the end today. Second one. All right, now, so again, Mr. and Mrs. Anderson, Remember when I told you that you hold, or what? remember when you told me that you hold both your attorney and your accountant in high regard? And in fact, you have already sent other friends and family members and associates to them? Well, now that I've completed your family protection, I'm sorry for the, apologize for the spelling there, I trust that I too have earned your confidence that you would be refer, able to refer others to me as well. So just off the top of your head, who do you think would benefit from my service? Again, we're going to wait. I'm going to try to get a response there on a positive frame. We try to get a name, get the information, just as we had in the previous one. This also might be a leave behind. Um, if you don't get an immediate reaction to this particular attempt, uh, obviously you should have business cards, and you would hope that they would eventually send other friends and family members to you as you had. But of course, most importantly, we want to try to walk out of there with at least one, if not two names. Now, the third one that I'm going to bring to your attention, um, this one really takes a little bit of more work, but you're going to see the sense of it and how it can benefit these families, and really how true it is in the way we're going to go about obtaining these opportunities. So this is going to be story number three, and I call this your support network story. Again, Mr. and Mrs. Anderson, now that you've made this wide decision and to protect your family, each other, I hope you never have a need to file a claim due to a serious illness or a death while this policy is in force. It's my responsibility as your agent to bring to your attention the claims process. The first step is that a call needs to be made to the insurance company to notify them of the loss. Usually, I receive that call, but it will be from someone other than one of you. Another misspelling, I'm sorry. Because of the emotional impact of a loss and all the arrangements that need to be made, you will have a need for a support network. Now, I would look at the husband and say, Tom, who would you call first if you lost Louise? And wait for that response. And Louise, who would you call first if something happened to Tom? And wait for that response. Now, obviously, both of these people, John and Mary, 
you trust the most. And that is quite an honor for them. I want you to notify John and Mary of the protection that I've established for you and tell them who I am. I want them to call on me so that I can start the claims process and assist to the point of delivering that check. In addition, I also want you to contact them in order to introduce myself and offer to them and discuss their insurance needs. So, Tom, what is John's phone number? And Louise, what is Mary's phone number? There's a lot going on when we do this type of a referral approach. Number one, first and foremost, we started off by acknowledging that they made a good decision to get the coverage and the protection. But number two, we open the world to the fact that perhaps one day, one of them will suffer the loss of the other. Now, of course, when you do that, you can imagine you've made a statement. They're both thinking about how terrible that would be, number one. And then you come back with the intelligence to say to them, what actually takes place? So again, as you've taken them down this road to build that bond and find the right plan for them, you're also showing them as a professional that there's more to your job than just meeting that need. And that you are the one that would be stepping forward to help them at that time. And then you bring them to the reality that it really won't be one of them calling you because of the distress and the anguish that's caused at that time, because of all the things that they have to do, all the people actually that they have to notify when a loss takes place. So again, imagine it yourself. Put yourself in that shoes. Uh, God forbid you've already had to be in those shoes that you could better relate to it and understand. But there is a support network that comes out at that time. And again, that support network are truly respected and trusted individuals. Those would make the absolute best referrals for you. So again, by bringing them to the point in time where they're thinking about that and who would they call, obviously there is someone that each of them trusts. And again, it could be another family member. But oftentimes it's a friend, it's an associate at work, it's a member of their church, it could be even uh, a deacon from their church. But anyway, the bottom line is that those are very important people in their world. And if you can obtain that opportunity, you certainly have done your job, not only in providing for them, but you've done your job as a professional to take all the steps necessary. So again, today, I'm pleased to say that what we will be doing is we're going to add the three scripts that, you know, these stories, you need to kind of work with them. Um, remember I talked about when we make a presentation, it's part of being on stage. Uh, you need to do the same thing with these. You need to practice with them. Obviously, you can't have this written on the sleeve of your shirt and walk in the door and start saying this to somebody, okay? So, again, you need to take the time to practice, just like any professional in any business. Practice will make you better at what you do. So, again, too, if Rebecca, if you could go ahead and, and post for them these actual three attachments, these will be there for you to download. And if you'll do that for yourself, I'm going to go take a look here in my screen and, and see. Um, boy, I hope someone early on said they couldn't hear me, so I hope that wasn't the case throughout. And somebody, I guess, misunderstood in my wording. When I said in the, in the scope of the picture of these scripts, 
um, to tell a client or to shut up. That's not what you tell them, obviously. That was meant for you. You shut up and you wait for the response. So, no, I wouldn't say that to my client to cause them to be insulted. Someone also asked me if they could have prepared in advance a little card uh, that would allow them to be completed so that they could mail it to that friend. That's a great idea. Why not? I mean, it wouldn't hurt if you were that ready um, just to stick it in that envelope and mail it out. Ask them to write the note is even better and let them address it for you. So that's a great idea, Steve. Thank you. Okay. I didn't ask earlier, but I should have. You know, as we're going through this process, and again next week we're we're going to go over and identify the true understanding of these benefits that'll be provided, and then we're going to follow that up with a meeting uh, with Charlene again from North America, and we're going to talk about the policy review, which is something that you should be doing actively with your clients on an annual basis. We're also going to go back and do some more work on the WinFlex web, do some more advanced illustration work that should be beneficial to you as well. And then we're going to also come back exactly where we started at the very beginning with Mr. Mike Gundy with the Guaranteed Trust Group. And again, we're going to hit on some of those goal setting programs again uh, on how to get an appointment and we're going to take a little bit different turn there uh, and, and work on actually the scope of appointment that those of you who are actively involved with the Medicare Advantage business and PDPs are fully aware of so we're going to add a little twist to that and how that could benefit you uh, that's coming up in mid-August, and then I'm going to find myself in a difficult circumstance, and that is, you know, what next can I best prepare that's going to be educational and beneficial? So what I'd like you to do, all those of you who are with me today, um, is to give that some thought, and please email me um, or call into the office at extension 713, that's my number direct. Give me some thoughts on where you might like me to go next so I can begin to work on that uh, prior to our expo, which is coming up in September also. So I've got a good webinar scheduled for us through the 17th of August, and then I'm open, and we'll have our expo on the 11th of September. So there's still a couple of weeks in there that I'd like to be able to have some additional true life insurance sales training. So if you would, uh, please, again, you know, give me some ideas. Give me some areas that you feel you need a little bit more assistance with. Um, and let me turn that into another type of a training program for everyone's benefit. Finishing a little early this morning, but I thought we would. Again, I thank you all for taking the time out of your day. I hope you've been able to download uh, that attachment of the three stories. And if for some reason, if you were offline and you were just listening to me, uh, if you want to, again, call in to the Messer number and, again, talk to any one of our marketing people although a number of them are out doing work right now as we speak today. But please do it. Ask for me here at extension 813. I'm sorry, 713. 813 is the agent services. They're always here to help you as well. And I'd like to get that handout and that PDF of information over to you. So, again, thank you. Next week we'll get together again. And, again, 
If you've done it with me before, please stay with us all the way through because I want to, you to see all the benefits that that living benefit product from American General is going to provide to your clients. Okay, thank you. Mark Contra signing off.